how to diagnose any failed motherboard step by step. So the first thing to check guys is the voltage in the power jack. So of course sometimes you can find the power jack like this one or type C like this one or just an integrated connector to the board. But the most important is to check the input voltage. Is it present or not in both pins? So this is the first step to diagnose any motherboard. The second step guys is to locate the switches, the input switches. In some motherboards you can just find one switch but in some you can find two switches. And of course the charge circuit. And how can we know if this one is charge circuit and those is input switches or not? We find the charge circuit always near to the battery connector and to the input jack. So this is the two switches. If we check this one, we have the input voltage B plus 19 volt in both sides, as you can see, and also this one in both sides. Means the two switches are good. If you find, for example, that the 19 volt doesn't pass to this side, means you have problem with this switch or the charge IC. But once we have 19 volts in all sides means the switches are good the charge ic also are good and we can even check the control signal here we have the gate over here we have 1.5 volt and the gate for this one is here we have 3.6 volts okay so the two switches are good the charge circuit are good so the step number three guys is to locate the current sense resistor this one do you see here we have r010 sometimes you can find r020 this is the most important component in the input circuit for any motherboard because this resistor is the bridge between the input and all other circuits in the motherboard so from here the b plus 19 volt for this board will be distributed and if you pay attention you will see here this dots over here as you can see one two three four five five dots means the 19 volt coming from the input will be distributed to five circuits in the motherboard so guys remember always locate this current sense resistor and check both sides you have to find the same voltage 19 volt or 15 volts or sometimes 5 volt depending on type of the motherboard okay let's move on to step number four the step number four my friend is to locate the bios the basic input output system chip and locate the pin number eight you have to find 3.3 volts Without 3.3 volt, the chip will not work properly. So the next step to check when diagnosing a motherboard is the power switch or on-off button. So please pay attention. For the power switch, you have to find 3.3 volt in two pins here in this side and in this side also, as you can see, and of course this side hold the ground so the power switch is good as you can see we can even check here we have 3.3 volt if i press the switch we have zero volt 3.3 volt zero volt as you can see so the switch works fine if you didn't find here 3.3 volt so the motherboard will not work okay after that go ahead and locate the 3 volt 5 volt circuit and check if you have 5 volts in one inductor and 3.3 volt in the other inductor so this is 3 volt 5 volt good we have 5 volt we have 3.3 volt what's next the ram circuit so here is the ram circuit guys so what we have to check is two voltages or sometimes three voltages. For the RAM, we have to check the serum capacitors above the RAM. We have to find the working voltage. We have 1.5 volt here. Any 
ceramic capacitor you will find 1.5 volt in one side and to ground in the other side because this is data tree and in this network resistor you have to find the half or vtt as you can see 0 0.5 75 okay the half of 1.5 volt divided by 2 equal to 0 0.75 and of course for this kind of motherboard we have another voltage here 1.8 volt good what's next of course we have to find here the voltage for the processor we have vcc core okay plus vcc core for the cpu and of course in this inductor we have 1.05 volt for vccp okay guys and of course for the cpu there are many channels but we once we find that the vcc core is present in one channel means all is good we know so here check vcc core as you can see 0 0.84 basically the vcc core is about or between 0 0.7 volt to 1.5 volt depending on type of the processor and we have the vcc p as you can see for buses and for component inside the cpu so this is it guys i hope that you understand this video about how to diagnose laptop motherboards this so you can use this process to diagnose any motherboard so i hope that you enjoyed the video please don't forget to like your likes motivate me to create more videos for you in a daily basis share subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified for for any upcoming video and for anyone who want to accelerate learning you can join me in my patreon page check my website you are very welcome thank you very much and see you in the next video